Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Garrett Harding and today I'm going to be showing you how to take footage that looks like this, really underexposed, very hard to see, and color grade it using DaVinci Resolve so that it looks more like this, very exposed and easy to see. So if you're ready to learn how to do something like that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content from me, and let's jump into Resolve. So in my timeline here inside of Resolve, I have two very short clips that are both very underexposed. The question about this topic that I got that inspired this video said embarrassingly underexposed footage. And I think hopefully you're not more underexposed than these because this is gnarly. So we're going to go ahead and move into our colors page and we're going to get started with this. If we look right here, we can see that I shot one of these in H.264 and that was out of this Canon T6i right here with the kit lens. So that is maybe like our control group. And then this one here, I shot in ProRes on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. So that one should perform a little bit better for us, but I'm gonna do what I can with both of these. So we're gonna get started with the ProRes. And I did ProRes instead of Blackmagic's RAW codec because I think more people have access to ProRes. So it's just a little bit more of an approachable workflow here. So the first thing we're gonna do, press Alt S a few times to get a few serial nodes added in right here. And then I'm gonna click on our first one and we'll go ahead and adjust our histogram here. If you don't have your histogram open, it's just this first little dot menu inside of the curves menu here. This point inside of the histogram is your white point. So wherever this is, is going to be the color white for that image. And this is your black point. So wherever that is, is going to be the color black for that image. So all of our color and everything is crushed way down here on this darker side because this is underexposed footage. So we're gonna take our white point and adjust that so that it's a little bit closer to where it should be for what we want to achieve. So we'll drag that point over and you can see that we're already starting to lighten up quite a bit. We're getting a little bit of haziness in there, but we'll fix that in coming steps. So now that looks a little bit more like we could fit that whole histogram inside of that space and have it be a little bit more even. So now if we go to our next node, we can actually see that represented. We have a lot of space on this side, on the darker side, and a lot of space on the lighter side. So I'm gonna tighten that up even more. So I'm gonna bring this in just like that. I'm gonna bring this darker side in as well. We get some of that contrast back in there. We're already starting to see we're getting a better image, but it's starting to break apart. We have a lot of colorful noise in here. And if you're watching on a phone and it's quick, you probably won't notice that so much. But in this case, you're probably going to see it because you're on a bigger screen. But on this one, aside from tightening up that histogram, I'm going to lower our temperature so that our white point looks more like white. That's what the wall should be. And then contrast, I'm going to actually bring down just a touch. And tint, I'm going to bring a little bit toward the magenta side because that's looking just a touch green for me. That might even be a little bit too cold. So I'll bring that up a little bit. Cool. So now onto this third one here. We can see that our histogram is pretty well taken care of. So now we'll get into our regular S curve where we introduce a little bit of that contrast back in. We still have kind of a garbage looking thing up here. So we're going to grab our shadows, bring those up, and our highlights and bring those up. And now we have what looks like a decent image other than all that noise. So in Resolve Studio, if you're not using Studio, you can kind of fudge this by bringing your mid-tone detail down. It brings out some of that noise, but not nearly as much as the built-in noise reduction tool. So we're gonna drop that on our fourth node and then we'll start working with that. So our spatial threshold here, we have Luma and Chroma, and right now they're ganged and we're gonna leave them that way. That just means that they move together instead of independently. And then our temporal threshold is going to change like how much these settings change. We're gonna zoom in so we can get a little bit closer look at this. And it's gonna be worse in the dark areas than it is in the light areas just because of how camera sensors work. And we're gonna go ahead and drag that back up and you can see that starts to go away and then we'll bring that threshold up and some of that natural color starts to return to Coda. You see that we definitely still have some bad colors in there, 
So I'm going to bring this actually back down and ungang these, and then I'm going to change just chroma. Because chroma is going to cover color noise, and luma is going to cover like black and white noise, like TV static. So you can use those separately or together. And now that a lot of that noise is out of there, I'm actually going to bring some of that midtone detail back in so that when we zoom out to fit, it doesn't look too soft. We'll go up, say that looks good. So here we have this clip, which after the noise reduction and everything actually looks pretty good. We can skip through it. And it's just a cute pup laying on a rug looking exposed like that is usable footage right there and if we get rid of all those color grades this is what we started with it's not quite just a black screen but it's pretty close apple prores is very gradable it's really cool and now we'll move into a more approachable kind of footage and that is what comes out of this t6i this camera while it has served me well over the years that i've had it does not do well unless you have a lot of light for it. And we will be seeing that pretty soon here. So same-ish steps. We're gonna take a couple of different ones, but for right now, we're gonna get started by adding some more nodes in and then bringing that white point to a place that makes more sense, just like that. And you can see now we're already getting some pretty serious banding right there. You can see like strips of that noise. That's gonna be really hard to get rid of. Yeah, you can see the noise represented in the histogram by those tiny little spikes. Not a fun thing to have to deal with, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to drag that white point in a little bit, and then we'll bring our shadows up, and this should really start to expose a lot of that noise. Yeah, you can see how gross that becomes immediately, but that's bright enough, so I'm just going to skip that and go right to noise reduction here. So spatial threshold will bring up and I'm actually going to ungang these again for this one because that color is a lot harder to deal with in this case than the luma. We'll bring that luma until it just starts to clean up the wall a touch and then our thresholds we're going to bring that chroma up to get rid of a lot of that color issue and then Luma will bring up a little bit as well. This is just working with the T6i and the footage that it just shoots by itself. So if we look at this, that looks way better than this and it happens super, super fast, which is really nice. So if you have embarrassingly underexposed footage, just follow those steps and you'll get some more exposure into your footage without completely ruining it. And obviously, if we wanna pixel peep this, that is not a very good image right there. But if it's on a small display like a phone, you're never gonna notice that that shot started at something this bad. And if it's on a computer, as long as it's not up there very long, nobody's gonna care. So our entry level gear before and after is looking like this. This is before and this is after. And if you don't wanna take all these steps or if you don't wanna to have to deal with your footage looking a little bit soft because of denoising, and like I said before, we'll actually do this since we're using the um, less expensive camera for this one, we're gonna go ahead and bring that mid-tone detail down. So when you bring that mid-tone detail down, a lot of that noise is reduced, but a lot of it is still there. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this clip to black and white, and now it just looks like grainy black and white. So if you have completely unrescuable footage, just make it black and white. Unless you absolutely can't, in which case, I guess you have to shoot it again. But if you can, black and white is definitely the way to go if it's unrepairable. The final tip that I'm gonna be sharing in this video, and I know this isn't a tip that a lot of people like to hear, but this light behind me right here that is on this tripod, I use it as a hair light, and, um, or I guess in this case, a hat light, and it costs 20 to 25 dollars on amazon i'll pop a link in the description down below but it really does light things up and this is this footage right here without the light on that little cheap light that i use and with the light on it looks more like that which is a lot more gradable as soon as we adjust that white point again you're gonna see that we get a lot of that detail without all the noise, which is really nice. It's very important to feed your camera light because that's how it makes good images. If you can't though, those first things 
definitely going to help you out. So hopefully this video is going to be beneficial for you. If it was, or if you think my dog is super cute like I do, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more from me in the future, or even in a couple of minutes from now, if you want to check out my backlog of over 100 tutorials, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post a new tutorial about DaVinci Resolve every single Thursday at 9am. So until next week, this has been How to Rescue Your Underexposed Footage with DaVinci Resolve. I'll see you next time.